Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about relative strength, especially the relative strength in considering a 750 universe of stocks and I'll explain from the base ground what is relative strength, how to know, uh, you know, which stock is better than the other, uh, how do we define relative strength and how can we calculate that in the 750 stock universe. So starting from the basics, what is relative strength? It's just simply noticing strength with respect to a benchmark. Example, stock A is performing better than Nifty 50, okay? Stock A has a relative strength higher than Nifty 50. If we have a stock B in the mix as well, right? And a stock B is performing worse than the index. For example, Nifty 50 gave a return of 8% in the last one year. Stock B gave a return of 4% in the last one year. And stock A gave a 12% return. So we can clearly see that stock A is has more strength than the index and stock B has less strength than the index, right? So we can just gauge strength by measuring price returns and we can extrapolate this concept to a large universe of stocks. But for this video, we'll be confined to a 750 stock universe. Don't worry, I'll add a timestamp in the video if you want to get directly to the Google Sheet calculations. In the first half of this video, I'll focus on these questions and explain the conceptual thoughts one by one, and then we'll move to the calculation part. So question number two, what if stock A and B both perform better than the index, then how do we know which one has more strength? Uh, we can just take a ratio of it, right? Stock A gave a return of 18%, benchmark was 10%, benchmark meaning nifty 50, gave a return of 10%. So the ratio of stock A's return with benchmark return is 1.8. Stock B gave a return of 15%, benchmark is still at 10%, the ratio here is 1.5. Even though both stocks beat the index return, Stock A has more strength than stock B. I hope that concept is cleared up until now. And this is one of the ways we can find strength using returns, right? Now, if there are hundreds of stocks in the universe, we'll have to select a benchmark and calculate its ratio for all the stocks, right? For, for So I'll have 750 ratios and to just see the ratios every day or every week is a bit cumbersome and it becomes tricky. So what do you prefer? What does a certain fund manager prefer? What does a certain influencer prefer, right? There are so many questions there. One uh, very common way uh, that I found is very useful is the investor business daily method. You can Google about it. It's heavily used in MarketSmith platform. So there's a platform called MarketSmith India. And of course they have a global platform as well. Uh, they use a methodology called relative strength they calculate an rs score which is based on the percentile calculation and they mention in front of each stock what how many percentage of stocks they are beating right so i've given an example here in row number 21 an rs score of 80 for stock a means that stock a is outperforming 80 percent of the stocks in the universe being tracked by that organization so if market smith gives stock a a rating of 80 it means stock A is out of outperforming 80% of the universe that Market Smith has considered. Similarly, if stock B had an RS score of 75, that means stock B is outperforming 75% of the market. So just by looking at this outperformance level, we can judge which stock has a better strength. And you can curate your portfolios as well. That right now the stocks I have in my portfolio or the stocks that I want to buy should be outperforming 80% of the market. So that, you know, you're maximizing your chances of selecting better quality stocks uh, for making your portfolio. So that is one thought. Now, getting the score is fine. But what if I want to know how the, uh, you know, to calculate the score? What is the method that IBD uses? IBD here is Investor's Business Daily, if you don't know. Unfortunately, that is some kind of proprietary information, which I could not decode. But I went around, you know, uh, hunt online and read various blogs and i found a forum uh, where i saw someone claiming that you can imitate a similar kind of ranking or similar kind of scores that ibd does right i uh, don't worry i'll give this link in the description below so that you know you can uh, access it just to give you a uh, you know a peek this is the blog and it and it's a big code but it does show how you know the person who has, who has who has written this blog calculates it so i'll paste a link here go there share your thoughts if you want to but yeah that's there so in the forum above 
what I saw in the code, I have summarized it in row 35 through 36. What this is doing is, is just taking a weightage average score of return. So you select, you select one stock, calculates its last three months return, last six months return, last nine months return, and last 12 months return. And just give it a weightage of 40%, 20%, 20%, and 20%. Your formula would look something like in row number 38. And once you get the answer out of this, you will have one return for all the 750 stocks, right? And then you can calculate a percentile on that. Now, why are we doing it like row number 38? Because this is what will probably Im imitate what Investor's Business Daily does with their RS scores. But you can do this for your yearly returns as well. You can just take 12 month returns, percentile them, and you can still get that score value. But we are trying to replicate what, uh, you know, IBD does. So this is the whole concept that I'll try to implement using Google Sheets. This was the first half of the video. If you uh, want to rewind and uh, you know understand these questions again, feel free to. Now I'll jump on to how do we calculate in Google Sheets. So I'll move on to the next tab. Uh, some explanation on the top. Since we track, since I track Indian markets using Google Finance, I'll consider using top 750 stocks as well because else the sheet gets very heavy and the updates are really really slow. So and uh, where do we get those 750 stocks? You have the links here. I'll show you the links and I'll add these links in the description as well. You go to NSE's website. There is a Nifty 500 uh, page, which I have, which I'll give you the link for. Go there and download the list of Nifty 500 stocks. Similarly, post that 500 stocks, there is a Nifty Microcap 250, which gives stocks from 501 to 750. And you can download the list of these stocks as well. Once it is downloaded, come back to the Google Sheet. You will find these four columns in that CSV file that you download with the same names, right? Just copy paste it here, one below the other. You will have Nifty 500 and Nifty Microcap 250, one below the other, right? So these blue columns, you will get it from the CSV file. Once that step is done, next step would be to create a ticker. Now, how to create a ticker? I have a video on this in the Google Finance playlist. I'll probably add a link to that as well if you guys want, but it's just that it's a way for Google Finance function to recognize what script you are asking the price for. Um, there might be some cases where some tickers might be same for NYSE, NSE, and FTSE. So just to be sure that we want the ticker price for NSE, National Stock Exchange of India, we need to use this ticker format, which you just want an NSE colon before adding the ticker name, right? And then in column G, I'm calculating the price on a certain date. Now, the day I'm recording this is June 2nd. So I can probably uh, update this date to 31st May as that was the last trading day. And this column will give me the price, the closing price on 31st May. If you don't know what this formula is doing, I have a video for that as well in the Google Finance playlist, how to calculate price on a particular date. I'll add the link to the playlist below because I'm realizing there are many links uh, that can, you know, uh, be used here, right? So that's that. So we'll wait for a couple of moments for the price to refresh. Till then, I'll explain it to you what's happening in the columns from H through K. In columns H through K, I'm just calculating rolling returns of three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. Again, we have discussed this before, how to do that. If you want a peek at the formula, is just a division of a formula. I am calculating uh, the price that I have today divided by the price it was 91 days before. That gives me a three month look back period, right? and you'll get the returns here. So for rolling returns, column H is three month, I is six month, J is nine month, K is 12 month. And then the weighted return formula. Now this is the one that I was talking about, the uh, the uh, the blog that I came across. 40% weightage to three month, 20% to six month, 20% to nine month return, and 20% to 12 month return. And if you get that answer here, you get a weighted return in column L. Now for 750 stocks, you have a weighted return, right? And now we can just score it out and give it a rating of one through 99. To not confuse matters so much, I'll just show you this percent rank formula, right? If you look at this percent rank formula, I'll zoom in on the video so that you can see it. I'm just taking the whole array of column L, L12 to L762, and I'm calculating what where L12 stands in the whole stuff. 
right? And I'm rounding this percentage through zero decimals so that I don't get a 99.15 or 89.70 kind of a value, right? So this round function just rounds it up to zero. I just added an if condition that if my answer comes out to zero after rounding up, I need to put it to a one because a stock cannot outperform 0% of its universe, right? That doesn't make sense. So that's the first if statement. And if it comes out to 100, it still is, it still is not possible, right? How can a stock perform outperform 100% of the market? It has to be 99 at the max. So I'm just putting 100 to a 99, 0 to a 1. And that's how I'm defining my lower limit and upper limit of outperformance or underperformance. So 1 through 99 will be this RS code that you'll see in column M. And that's it. After that, it's just the same formula repeated again and again, percent rank round and an if statement. This formula looks big, but it's very easy once you know how to nest around a couple of formulas, right? So done that. Now I have the RS score. I can just look at, you know, the RS score that I want to look at now. I want to only look at scores above 90, right? So I'll go 90, 91, 92, 94 till 99. So I filter that, I have the names. How many stocks are there? Of course, there should be only 10%, so 73, yeah. So I have 73 out of 750 stocks who are above 90. And I think I, did I add 90? Yeah, who are outperforming 10% of them. I mean, this is outperforming 90% of the market. So now you can just look at the charts for these and you'll be amazed to find that these are in a, in a good momentum, right? And these might be good for investment, but not going to advise anything. Look at the charts, do your fundamental analysis, do your technical analysis. It will be very helpful. This is just a way to filter strong stocks who are performing better than the weighted return of the whole universe. Remember, we are not using any benchmark here. The benchmark here is just a weighted return formula. That's it. Now, why is the benchmark a weighted return formula? If you notice, I'm giving 40% wages to a three month return. But that three month is also part of the previous six month and it's also part of the previous nine month and a 12 month as well. So if a stock performs better in the past three months, it will automatically get a higher weighted return because there will be a recency bias. I'm anyways giving a 40% weight to three month return. And then this three month is also getting added on to six month, nine month and 12 month. If you think about it in a timeline manner, right? So that's that. Now. Finishing all of that, I have all the 750 stocks. What is the application of this? If you notice, at the end of every week, I store this data to see if a stock is slowly outperforming the market or it is it underperforming the market. And with every week, I see certain numbers, you know, which give me a certain indication of what's happening. So example, this row, I can see on 5th April, the RS score was 47. Today, it's 34. So on 5th April, this stock, whatever the stock name is, was outperforming 47% of the market. Right now, it's outperforming 34% of the market. So kind of it hasn't given a great return with respect to the entire market. In a similar way, stock in row number 17, I can clearly see it was outperforming 32% of the market on 5th April. But on 24th May, it's outperforming 49 and by the end of this week, it's outperforming 31% of the market. So probably this week wasn't a good week for the stock with respect to the 750 stock universe. Now, since 31st May has ended, I can just copy this whole column, give the scores here, and now I can just make a heat map here. Just go to format. Oh, sorry. Go to format. Conditional formatting, color scale, and I can do that, yep. And if you look, I can just clearly start spotting if there is a reversal in any of the names, any of any of the names I want to track, or if any of the names were strong in the past four weeks, but now they aren't strong, right? So like this one, I can see a stock was outperforming 80% of the market in 5th April, now it's outperforming 93% of the market. So this stock has certainly improved right? 663 through 74. This stock has also improved. So this is how you can keep track of names which are improving or not improving. Another great example, 52% and now it's 95%. So this stock has certainly improved. Maybe you can look into it when it breaks a certain number, like when a stock breaks 
70 percent maybe that's when you start getting interested in it right so that's a way you can use that and then you can create a flag so what kind of flags you can create okay if the current value is greater than or equal to 80 then one else is zero right and i just don't want to look at this one 80 like the last four months 80 right so i'll just add an and condition okay and p12 same will be q r and s right q r and s so if all of four these have greater than 80 then i'll probably look into these stocks you know so i filtered that now if i filter these ones i have 118 stocks right and now if i want to look for these names i can probably look for these names so like amara raja batteries is there ages chemical is there abb is there so let's look at a a r e n m right i have the chart loaded out so you can see this has been doing better it's above its 21 day average it's above a 50 day average and it's certainly a strong stock from technical means as well the volumes are good good too right so you can use this uh knowledge on google sheets apply the rs ratings and the best part about using google finance function is that it updates once you change the dates right so one when the next week ends i can just update the price here add another column here and then i'll get data for the next week by june 7th and you can keep on tracking this week over week keep on finding new sectors that are you know getting some interest new sectors that are getting good rolling returns good weighted returns good rs scores and you'll slowly learn how the market behaves how the stocks are behaving and maybe you even like certain stocks for your investment purposes based on whatever analysis you do at your end so this is what i wanted to share with you on the rs methodology the relative strength what the basic concepts and how to use google finance to implement a, a, a you know a basic analysis strategy to identify certain sectors or certain stocks that you want to look into i hope this was helpful thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers